Hello everybody, my name is Oltono, and right before we begin the video, I just want to say a few quick announcements. Uh, first of all, sorry that I have not been making videos recently. I've been working on a few projects. I'm probably going to put out a video essay about uh, Pride Month, uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, which is partly what this video is on, and uh, BLM at some point. I'm also going to be putting out a uh, another video about uh, the Tula Rosa downwinder, so stay tuned for that. And hopefully I'll also be getting to doing more gaming videos as well in the uh, near future because, I mean, I gotta do what you guys like and also show you guys new games and just things that you guys might be interested in. And I also want to do what I want to do, so because of that, I hope you all enjoy uh, this video and the videos coming out in the foreseeable future. And then uh, I also want to say, uh, like I said earlier, uh, happy uh, Mental Health Awareness Month. I'm going to put out a video on why I'd rather celebrate this than Pride Month. And yeah, you'll see that uh, I'll probably have uh, Hunter Fam Salad, if you didn't know. Uh, in the video and possibly some other people if they care to join and yeah overall it's mainly just new content and uh, content with actual effort put in for this month and possibly the next month after so I hope you guys enjoy this video and yeah Hello everybody, my name is Alton and welcome back to another video today. I'm going to be looking at this video that I found. I started watching a little bit of it and uh, it really interested me and I wanted to see or show my thoughts on the video. I wanted to show everything. Uh, this video is titled uh, Why Kids or Why Gifted Kids Are Actually Special Needs Kids. And, uh, let me just tell you, I couldn't find a statement that seemed more true than that. Uh, th this video is by Healthy Gamer GG. Uh, make sure you go subscribe to him. I already did. I thought I put a like on this video, but I'm actually going to keep that in my like videos. I don't know if I should make, like, uh, a playlist that just has everything, like, all all my like videos or the ones that matter at least are not that's up for y'all to decide but uh without further ado i'm gonna watch this video and i'm gonna give my thoughts after well each chapter so there, there, there's that all right all right let's get this let's get this going so, oh boy, I sure do love being perceived as a gifted child. I hope I don't end up as being a perfectionist, perfectionist burnout with, burnt out, I suppose, with depression, anxiety, unfulfilled expectations, and no real interests or goals. Uh, yeah, I, I, can re I can relate. Not to the perfectionist part, but definitely the burnout. I don't know if the unfulfilled expectations, I'm not quite at that point where I feel like all my expectations or interests and goals, like all those stuff is unfulfilled. I don't think I'm at that point, but I definitely had like really bad anxiety. I finally got over it like a year or two ago. I thought that was a whole ordeal. Depression, I don't even know. <laughs> So, this is something that someone cro cross-posted to our subreddit. You know, it's a meme. We've had a couple of streams about burnout and gifted kids. So today what I'd like to talk to y'all a little bit about is the pathway from gifted child to burnt out perfectionist, as well as sort of the way that society actually sets gifted children up to kind of fail. So I know it's kind of interesting, but when we think about a gifted child, we think about, we perceive gifted as an advantage. 
But in my experience working with a lot of gifted children, it's not always an advantage. And in fact, oftentimes it can be a burden. And so I've seen... Facts, though. <laughs> I remember back in school, like, I always kind of bugged people. Or not bugged. I bugged the teachers a little bit one time. But, like, that's a different story. Uh, I know back in elementary, like, if you came back from a gifted class and, we were, and everyone was doing work, you were just a kind of expected to know what was going on so it was actually more up, uh more so up to the students to get you up to speed on what's happening more so than the teacher ever would not only that but if you finish your work early in elementary and or or earlier than everyone else the teacher would uh tell you to like go help everyone else and it's just like because i'm gifted doesn't mean i'm like the smartest kid in the class like i had c's all throughout uh elementary school like it was mostly because of what i was doing myself not because of the fact that like i'm intelligent or not because honestly i don't know <laughs> too much about that subject like, I, I, I couldn't tell you my IQ. I couldn't tell you if I'm smart or not. I don't think I'm too smart, but I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like, it always ended up being that, that whole thing where everyone always thought that uh, gifted kids... Or just the smart kids. But that's really not what it was at all. It's... Like, like the title says. Why gifted kids are actually... Spe like... That just makes sense. I couldn't really expand upon why... Or exactly how I think that. And I think... Uh, he's gonna... Explain that... In a way that... I couldn't <laughs> he's probably gonna explain it in a better way than I could ever so I'll just see where that goes it's not always an advantage and in fact oftentimes it can be a burden and so Back. I've seen this a lot in our community I've worked with a lot of people who kind of fall into that this category I, I suppose I sort of fall into it as well where I grew up kind of get I mean gifted right so like school was easy for me I was told from a very young age that I was smart um, I was also kind of held accountable for, like, not studying, right? They were, like, I'd kind of, like, not study very much and maybe get a B plus or an A minus. And my teachers would tell my parents the same thing, every single parent-teacher conference. They'd always say, well, if Olaf just applied himself, he would be the best student in the class. If Bro, I hate that. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just that easy. What if you just applied yourself? What it, what does that mean? Can you like elaborate on what applying yourself means? Because like, I I actually heard this like fairly recently in tenth, wasn't tenth, eleventh grade. Uh, and like at the end of the year, the teacher was just like, oh, if you just applied yourself. You could probably do better in your work. And I, I left the building. It was like the last day of school. I left the building. And I was just so confused. Like, what does that mean? What, what are you trying to say here? Because instead of saying, oh, just apply yourself. In what way, shape, and form? Because, like, it's not something that you could just be like, oh, okay. <laughs> it's just that easy. No, like, <laughs> no. <laughs> Back to it. If he only just like studied more, he'd be the best student in the class, right? They were like, he's super smart. Exactly. He has a lot of potential, right? So they use these words like they, they talk about how smart I am. They talk about all the potential I have. 
and if I just applied myself, I'd be, you know, I'd be such a, I'd be the best student. No so it's kind of interesting quote. because we perceive <laughs> giftedness as an advantage. But as one of my teachers once told me, and we'll kind of get to this towards the end, they once explained to me that um, this is in, 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 not in medical school, but when I was training to become a psychiatrist, I had a supervisor who once told me that gifted, gifted children are special needs children. And what that literally means is that, like, the needs of a child who's gifted are actually different from the average child. And the parents who recognize that and recognize that this child is going to need, like, a slightly different structure or a different curriculum or a different way of being raised are the ones that end up sort of doing a really good job. And oddly enough, in her clinical experience, she found that much like any other special needs children, um, you know, kids that were not treated appropriately despite their gifts were the ones that kind of struggled so this thing i wouldn't say that i was like raised badly or at home it was that bad it was actually relatively good i was raised relatively good uh my mom was just angry <laughs> that's all that's all it is <laughs> uh but I wouldn't say it's more so a home thing, or maybe it was, I'm not sure. Uh, but conditions are, like, very much different. There was something you said earlier that I wanted to talk about. But... Um, you know, kids that were not treat. Oh, yeah, that's that's what I wanted to talk about. Uh, uh, there was, or the thing about gifted kids is that... Uh, they're technically the same as uh, special needs kids because there's a whole spectrum of, like, gifted and special needs. Like, in the middle, you got the quote-unquote norm the normal kids. And uh, on one side, you have gifted, and the other side, you have special needs. But really, they're both just special needs, just different types of special needs. And uh, part of the whole reason why... I didn't, or, like, I don't like having to be, like, gifted now is mostly because, uh, I, I've realized, like, children hear, oh, you're gifted, and that stuff starts, like, getting to their heads. Like, I know what it did for me, at least. Like, in hindsight, at least. Like, at the time, I didn't know that, but, like, now I'm just like, bro, that just kind of went to my head. Like, you you think you're just better. <laughs> or you think you just have more power or something. Or you're just smart. Because I always thought, hey, I'm I'm just this such a smart kid. N no. No. <laughs> no. Like, they, they, they should really change the name especially because it gives off a misleading thing because if a kid hears oh you're smart like all your life that kid's gonna grow up to think hey i'm smart when in all actuality maybe they're not as smart as they think they are or maybe they're just something goes wrong and like i don't know like I just don't think that's a good thing to do. And when I first heard it, I thought it was like absolutely ridiculous, kind of blew my mind a little bit. But I respected the supervisor a lot, and I started thinking about it. So what I'd like to share to, with you all today is sort of the pathway that a gifted child takes, how a society treats them, how parents treat them, the kind of struggles they face or the influences that they have. Let's not even call it a struggle because it may not be a struggle and then sort of how they end up. So I'd like to kind of share with that with you all today, okay? So the first thing that tends to happen is when a child is gifted, they te school tends to be easy, right? So if you kind of think about it developmentally, there are a lot of different things that happen in school. So let's talk about school. So school is a place where you get you socialize, right? So you get socialization skills. It's a place that you learn, and people think that school is primarily about learning, and it is primarily about learning, but it's just not about learning the, the subject material. So sure, we learn like arithmetic and mathematics and all that kind of stuff. We learn history and science and all that good stuff. 
But really, school, if you kind of look at it developmentally, is a wonderful opportunity to learn certain key things. Socialization is a really important piece. The other thing is like habits and how to study. And this is the first sort of disadvantage that I think gifted children sort of face, is that you know if you're young and you're gifted, school is so easy that you sort of get by without the luxury of studying. And so we kind of perceive this as an advantage, right? Like if you have to, if you go through school and you don't study, like that's easy, like it's easy, easy clap, right? And so it is, and that sort of makes sense. But the, the interesting thing that, that I found is that oftentimes being intelligent, especially when you're super young as a kid, actually sets you up for failure down the road because you never need to learn the habituated study like technique that you kind of need to, that, that you need to su succeed later on. So for a normal kid, what tends to happen is like they don't have to study like in first grade, but maybe like second grade, third grade, they have to learn how to study like once a week maybe. They like learn how to study the night before the test because it doesn't come easily to them. And then fourth grade, fifth grade, now you're, you're doing homework a couple days a week. You know, you're studying two or three days before the test. And then you kind of hit middle school where maybe you're studying like four days before the test. And so there's this very graduated sense of increasing responsibility as you go further and further in school. And it's sort of designed that way, right? We're not, like no teacher has a six-year-old six that they're like giving 14 hours of homework a week to. It's just absurd. And then at the, at the top end of the spectrum in terms of study habits and what we demand of students, you have something like, let's say, law school or medical school or things like that, where people are regular studying like 60 hours a week, 80 hours a week in medical school. Because you know people have, have grown up and have built enough of a study habit where they can actually handle that pace of study. So what happens with the gifted kid? So the gifted kid, you know, when, when you sort of level up your skill to level one, right, in the first grade, and then you level up your studying skill to level two in the second grade and level three in the third grade, the gi gifted kid never actually has to like grind that XP for levels like one through five of studying habits. And so they sort of manage to get Bs or As without really minimal, with minimal studying or no studying at all. And then seventh grade rolls around, eighth grade rolls around, they start to struggle a little bit maybe to get Bs. They're still not learning how to study because they sort of skipped that part of, of the, you know, the, the skill building. And we'll kind of get to that later. And then what tends to happen with gifted kids is that they don't need to study, don't need to study, don't need to study, and then they hit a wall. They finally get into some kind of situation where their raw intellect cannot, is no longer sufficient to handle the schoolwork that they're supposed to handle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I feel like I'm being uh, personally called out. Because like, through all of elementary, didn't have to take notes, didn't have to take notes, didn't have to study, didn't have to study. All I did was just prep for a project every now and then. And that's about it. Because like, we do projects on our own about just whatever. And for the most part, all you had was like homework and maybe a project to do. And it wasn't that difficult most of the time. And uh, in sixth grade, I had to finally start taking notes. And it was difficult because I, <laughs> I, I was very slow at taking notes i still kind of am like if i'm doing something if i'm writing something down if i have to take notes i'm very slow at taking notes it's it's a it's a hassle <laughs> and then because like it's a classroom i i, I felt like a hey, i don't want to waste time so what ended up happening is i'd have to end up trying to figure out how to summarize the notes in a small amount of time while writing them down so that I don't take up as much time because it's like there's a, there's a limited time for class and in middle school I didn't know much about tutoring at the time not until really like late middle school high school ish time I didn't know that that was like a, an external thing that you could do outside of school at least and I never really knew that that was really an option either so it was just very difficult for me to take notes so there's never that step from like one to five of being able to just 
take notes, soak in all this information, write it down, be able to do all this stuff. I never really went through that. So it's it's really interesting. <laughs> Ugh. But they've trained themselves at that point. They've accustomed themselves at that point to managing school with raw intellect. And so when that kind of falls short, they like they, they really kind of really hit a wall. It's a very, very hard cliff to to overcome. And so this is kind of the first thing that that sort of shoots gifted kids in the foot. And this also leads to kind of this idea of perfectionism and burnout because then they like, you know, then they, they struggle a lot. They don't understand why they can't do it. They, they try. They know they're smart. Everyone's talking to them about potential. They start to feel really bad about themselves. So the first kind of interesting thing that gifted kids run into is the fact that they sort of don't develop the proper study habits because, you know, as a six-year-old, it's kind of not your fault because, like, you're not mature enough as a six-year-old to realize, like, oh, I need, you know, to have good study habits. So even though the teacher said this last Tuesday and I understand that I don't need to study, I'm going to sit down and, like, practice my study habits. It doesn't make any sense. It's, like, completely artificial. Bruh. I was going to say something. I forgot what I was going to say, but, like, I feel that. So that's the first thing that happens is that they kind of hit this wall of, of, you know, not being able to study. That comment right there. F gifted kids, they create jealousy in other kids. Like not on purpose. Like that, like that goes back to what I was saying earlier. That it kind of gets to people's head. Because you be in this whole different program that specifically tends to you and people that are kind of like you. And everyone thinks, oh, hey, those are just those are the the kids that get like all the special treatment and stuff and granted the the whole system the school system kind of treated us like that like oh these are the special kids that get all the stuff <laughs> but really it's it's not something to strive like g being gifted isn't really all that great like Sure, it was more fun, but that's because it specifically tended toward more so towards us than anything else. And yeah, it was. It's just a different class. That's all it is, really. It's not really something to strive for. Like there, there's other opportunities and stuff, but never anything too big, too bad. Like it's not really that. Yeah, it's just, yeah. <laughs> the second thing to consider is the expectation. So another thing that really leads gifted kids kind of down the wrong path is the burden of expectation that's placed upon them. So from a very young age, they're told, oh, you're gifted, you're smart, you're special, you have so much potential. And so what that starts to do is it constructs like a very, very lofty goal in their minds, right? So I'm going to use kind of an analogy, which is kind of like, you know, if I think about an amazing home, like I think about a mansion, it can have a beautiful blueprint and I can buy a gigantic piece of land and I can look at that and I can say like, oh, like this, this home or this, this blueprint has so much potential. And sometimes we kind of forget that like you can have like you can have a blueprint for a mansion, but that's going to actually take way more work to achieve than like building a shack. So the other really interesting thing that, that we sort of kind of get wrong societally is that we assume that when someone is gifted, things are actually going to be easier for them, that they need to work less to accomplish the same amount. But in my experience, living up to a gifted child's potential involves more work. It's sort of like, you know, it, it's just like building a shack versus building a mansion. Like, sure, the, the mansion is capable of so much more than the shack is capable of. But let's not forget for a moment that the amount of effort that it goes into building a, a mansion is actually way more than what's required to build a shack. And this is the second place that gifted kids kind of get tripped up because everyone around it, it, it is looking at them and they're sort of saying, oh, like this is an amazing mansion. Like you could build such an amazing mansion. And we all kind of forget for a moment that like actually living up to that potential is very, very difficult and requires a lot more of an investment than Facts. building a shack. And so this gap between what people expect of you and also the idea that things should be easier for you kind of compound on themselves 
and sort of end up with gifted kids kind of, kind of feeling like they're they're failing at everything, right? Because they have all this potential, and they're not they're just not living up to it. This <laughs> this kind of encapsulates what I was talking about earlier. Like, it's it's way better said, way better analogy. Like, like I said earlier, this, this guy knows what he's talking about. This guy knows exactly what he's talking about. So the other thing that we'll see in gifted kids is that what, what tends to happen is that they will put in some amount of work, but they're expecting a mansion when all they've really put in is as much as building a shack. I may have lost you all a little bit there, but let me just explain. So, you know, what a gifted kid will do is they'll like look at their peers, right? And they'll say like, oh, like this person did this and they're able to accomplish this. So like I should be able to do that too. And so if you look at your neighbors who are building a shack and they're like, whoa, they went to Home Depot and they got like 100 pounds of wood and they built their shack over a weekend. And then like you go and get your 100 pounds of wood from Home Depot and you start like brought to you by Home Depot, I suppose. Um, and, and you start building your mansion like it, I know it sounds kind of weird, but, you know, 100 pounds of wood may be enough to build a shack, but it's nowhere near enough to build a mansion. And then what gifted kids will do is they'll look at the, like the foundation that they've laid with 100 pounds of wood. And they'll be like, where is the, sh I don't even have a shack. Like, you know, it's, it's like they, they look at what they've accomplished when they put in the same amount of energy as someone else. And they get really confused because this person has a complete shack over here. And like, I have like barely the beginnings of a mansion. And so then that sort of negatively impacts them. They start to like feel like they're actually inferior to these other people because they've been told, oh, you're smarter than the kid next door. Like, why the hell is the kid next door getting into college and like you're not even getting into college? And so it all sort of, sort, of, sort of compounds, right? Because even for the gifted kid, they're not trying to build a shack because they've been told they've been, they're gifted their entire life. So it's not enough to be average if you're gifted. So what you have to do is you try to you know, build a mansion because that's what you've been told that you're capable of. And that's the expectation you set for yourself. And then you're, you're left kind of scratching your head and wondering like why you don't even have a shack yet. Even though you studied for a month and they studied for a month, you're not getting as much as the, they're getting. And it's kind of super bizarre, right? Because we don't, we just don't think about it that way. We think that if you're gifted, that means that everything should be easier for you. That it not only do, they may need a hundred pounds of wood to build a shack, but you should be able to build a shack in fifty pounds of wood. It should be easier for you, but it turns out paradoxically being harder. Yep. Yeah, well, like expectations and all this, like expectations. And people thinking you're the, the like the smart one, Th people thinking that you're capable of all this stuff, all this expectations, it just kind of stacks. And what ends up happening is uh, it just ends up getting to a point where it's just like, what happened? <laughs> How are you doing bad? Like, people they put so much expectations on you when it till it comes to a point where it's just like what happened you could have done all this why didn't you do that but really it's just like i only had the stuff the same stuff as everyone else but it's just i was told that i could do more you know it's, it's it's like what he said earlier it's like yeah <laughs> man this whole thing is just relatable i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing do i want to know that's the real question yes yes i do and then we sort of end up with kind of the final state of a gifted kid which if we kind of think about it internally is a state of like really shame and low self-esteem. So all this stuff kind of compounds, right? Like you're told you're smart, so you set this expectation of what you're capable of, like way up here. And then like, you know, first grade goes by and you're up here. Second grade goes by and you're up here. Third grade goes by and you're up here. Boom, boom, boom. Fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and then you kind of tank, right? And as you go to college, suddenly like you don't have the study skills involved. And now in the gap between what you're capable of and what you actually accomplish, this gap is where shame comes from. This is the shame gap that gifted kids inevitably fall into, which is when they fall short of what their expectations are. And this could be, once again, due to the fact that you're, you know, you're setting out to build a mansion, 
and you ended up not even building a shack, a shack, right? So all of these discrepancies between your expectations and your accomplishments in that gap, and the bigger the gap is, the more it's filled with shame. So then what happens is kids are ashamed, right? Because they should be doing more. They should be doing better. And then like the shame then further compounds and makes it hard to find motivation. And this is where you kind of get burnout. So two things, two things. Yes, exactly what he said. Because like maybe not exactly burnout and or – I don't know if, if I'm there yet or not. Maybe. Yes. No. I don't know. If, did I say that earlier in the video? I don't know. But um, it's definitely a whole thing about just how everything goes down, you know? Because you're expected of all this stuff, but really you're not going to be able to do that. Like, uh... Back in ninth grade, I got, like, A's and B's and all that. But as time went on, it got to, like, 10th grade, 11th grade, getting at most a B, a C, D's. Like, it was crazy. Because it's just like... I was doing so good until now. And then you try to analyze what have you been doing wrong? What have I been doing wrong? And then you realize it's just like I haven't been doing I haven't changed much at all. I've been doing a lot of the same stuff that I've been doing. It's just that the curriculum changed, the grade changed everything got harder and now all of a sudden you're at this level where it's either equal to or below what you had before and now it's a harder curriculum so you have to step it up all of a sudden whenever you never expected it to happen if i'm if i'm making sense because that's like kind of what ended up happening. <laughs> also, uh, second second thing, uh, another really good comment here. Telling kids that they're special is only hurting them in the long run. Nobody is born special. That's something that has to be earned. Only show affection if your kids have exceeded your expectations of them. This way, they grow up and realize their full potential. This is where I kind of don't think... I got through uh, because, like, in all of elementary school, I'd be getting, like, C's, or we had a number system, so it was, like, threes, twos. I can't remember which one equals a C. But uh, all the way until fifth grade, every time I got a report card, family would uh, take me out for ice cream saying that i did good and in fifth grade like the last report card of the year didn't go out to ice cream i was just like why am i going out to ice cream it's just like because you did bad and that hit me like a truck like that was that was mind-blowing and then i realized uh later on that i had the same grade throughout the entire thing i was just like oh not a good look i've all I, i've kind of always been like a c student when uh everyone kind of expected like a's and b's for me and yeah it it wasn't it wasn't good <laughs> so then like you have these gifted kids and you're like hey man just like go to a community college you don't have to go to an ivy league school school you don't have to go to like harvard or stanford or mit just like go to your local community college and in that comes a bunch of shame because you've been told your entire life that you're better than that, right? And so you start to develop this ego of being a super smart kid. And then this leads to avoidance of things because all you're left with is the identity of a smart kid. So you can never even bring yourself to go to community college because smart kids don't go to community college. In your mind, that's where the stupid kids go. 
And if you go to community college, then suddenly you've lived your entire life for 20 years being told you're a smart kid. It's the only it's your biggest strength. It's the one that everyone keeps talking about. And now, like, suddenly you have to relegate yourself to being a stupid kid. And in that gap is where the shame lives. In that gap is where the ego lives. Okay? I think that was fact. <laughs> I, I haven't gone uh, to college. I don't really have too many plans on going to college. If I do, there is stuff that I have that I can use for college, to go to college, all this other stuff. But uh, I, I don't relate to this point as much as, like, some of the other points. But, uh... If anyone does, uh, like, comment below, like, I'd like to know your thoughts and what you think about everything. So it's really, really hard, right? Because you're set up with these expectations. People don't really acknowledge that because you're capable of a lot, it's actually going to take, like, a lot of work to take that potential and bring it to fruition, right? And that's, like, that's the biggest thing is people just lose sight of the fact that Building a mansion actually takes more work than building a shack. And your entire life, people have told you, like, you should build this mansion because that's what you're capable of. And so then we kind of get to, all right, so, like, what do we do about it, right? So if you're a gifted kid who's kind of perfectionistic and burnt out and, like, society has sort of set you up this way, I'm not saying that you're not individually responsible as well, but I do think that there's a whole reason. So when we have, like, a generation of burnt out gifted kids – I think we have to be fair and be a little bit scientific and kind of acknowledge that this may not be like an individual problem, right? When we've got a generation of kids like this, like maybe there's something societal going on. And I think paradoxically, we sort of set these kids up to struggle. And so then the question becomes, okay, like what do we do about it? So the first thing you should do if you're a gifted kid is to stop comparison, right? Like comparison is, is the foundation of getting out of this problem because as Yes. <laughs> First of all, we, ne we need to stop praising gifted kids. Stop saying gifted kids are the smart kids. Stop saying the word gifted. Like, e even just saying gifted implies that, oh, you've been blessed with this amazing knowledge, this amazing intellect, or just this... Like, it's not. <laughs> it's really not. The, the whole thing about being gifted is just that you just think different than everyone else. Like, if you, it's, just, it's the same thing with autism. Like, autistic people aren't stupid. Autistic people just think differently. It's just a different mindset. And I don't, and I think a lot of people just don't understand that whole thing. Like, some people will be good at one thing, and other people will be good at another thing. You may call one thing something that's really good, and another thing something that's really bad. But all in all, they're on their same thing, just different meaning at that point. similar uh similar men or not mental not mental states different mental states but similar in which the amount of uh portrayal it gets whether it be good or bad because it's really neither it's just different because the mindset's just different it's not it's not a better mindset it's not a higher mindset it's not a more intelligent mindset no it's just different and people i think at, le at least i, I think <laughs> people need to like stop making this comparison stop making this whole thing oh you're the special kid you're the intelligent kid you are the kid that's just going to be able to do everything you're the smart kid like that needs to stop because i know it did not help me it it 
all this praise, all this saying I'm smart, all this, like, it, it didn't help. It really did not. As long as you are comparing yourself, and this is part of the issue, is that if you think about the word gifted, what does the word gifted imply? It is a word <laughs> that has no meaning outside of a comparative framework. Do you guys get that? The only way you can be gifted is if there are other people who are not gifted. And so essentially... Exactly what I was just talking about. Exactly. Like, that's facts. That's facts. It's 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 facts. Actually, what happens is like the whole idea of a gifted kid only exists in relationship to another kid, and so what we find in the minds of gifted kids is that they're comparing themselves all the time. Oh, I don't want to go to community college. That's where the stupid people go. Oh, I don't know. Like, why I can't do what my friend is capable of? Like, he's able able to do so much. Why am I not able to do so much? I have an older sibling who did fantastic. And now I have big shoes to fill, right? There's so much comparison. All of the expectations that gifted kids have don't come from themselves, right? Because if you actually based your expectations on what you're capable of, you'd be capable of a B, C, D, or an F. That's what, that would be a realistic expectation. But instead, you create these artificial expectations that are based on comparison. And why do gifted kids do that? Because it starts with their parents. It starts with their teachers. We're all told that we're gifted, which is by definition a comparison to all of the other kids. And so then what happens is you're looking over at the shack and you've got this blueprint for a mansion and they give you some wood and then you try to build the mansion and like you don't even have a roof when this person has a completely built shack. And then you kind of look at yourself and we're like, man, I must be like a super idiot, right? Like, and it, it's just, it's so bizarre that when we set up this kind of, when we start with this framework of a comparison, we sort of doom ourselves to failure because there's like, we're just, it, it's just, it's never going to work because you can't ever base the expectations of your life and what you're capable of based on what someone else is doing. It, it's all conditions. Like, there's a lot that comes from, like, the child themselves, but a lot of it also has to do with conditions. How you're raised, what other people think of you, how other people treat you, friends, family, teachers, acquaintances – like, it all depends on it. And it goes to that thing where it's just, like, nurture versus nature. And I really tend to lean towards nurture because, like, it, like concepts like evil, ego, all this other stuff tends not to be uh, something that is obtained at birth. It's not born. It's created it's manifested it's built up over a, a matter of time through all these different factors that just leads up keeps stacking on top of each other you know it's just yeah <laughs> right if someone else is happy studying chemical engineering it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy studying chemical engineering if somebody else is happy dating someone of the opposite sex, it doesn't mean that you're going to be happy dating someone of the opposite sex. The whole point is, is as individual as humans, we're individuals. And if you're a gifted kid, the first thing you've got to do is let go of all comparison. So next thing is to recognize that your road is going to be a rough one, right? So like when someone sets out to build a mansion, they know in their mind that like this is going to take a while, right? You can't expect to build a mansion in the same amount of time, it would take someone to build a shack. And so if you're a gifted kid and you expect a lot from yourself, okay, recognize that this is gonna be a long road. And the greater your potential is, the longer it's gonna take for you to get there. And this is something that I can understand in, in hindsight. Like, so I grew up as a gifted kid and was like in you know the special classes or whatever. I actually still remember when I was in eighth grade, my grades started to dip and I, when I went to high school, um, I didn't qualify for, based on my grades, like my high school was like, yeah, he needs to be in like regular English. He can't be in like advanced English or he doesn't meet the criteria for advanced English. And so my parents were really, really not happy with that because they have, they have such a smart boy. You know, he's so smart. He just needs to apply himself. So they went to the school. That was mean math. <laughs> they were just like, oh, you don't need to take Algebra 2. You already took Algebra 2. And 
that's it's all because I, I skipped uh, math class. So they always put me in the advanced math class, and I had the option to go into an advanced math class or the not advanced math class. I chose not to go into the advanced math class. Turns out I did good in the normal math class, and then I ended up doing bad in the normal math class the following years. It was it was terrible. School, and I remember having a meeting with the the honors English teacher or whatever, and then he's like, "Do you want to be in this class?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to be in the class." And my parents were like, "Yeah, he should. He belongs. He belongs in the class, right?" And so the teacher was like, "Okay, fine," because you know, I mean, you're not gonna, you know, there's some parents that could potentially be annoying, so you're like, whatever. And so I ended up being in the class that I really didn't belong, and I really didn't do very well, right? Because I didn't have the work ethic, but it propagates sort of this idea of like you can handle it so like i started off you know going on the wrong track kind of like in in high school it took me uh, it took me five years to graduate from college right with a 2.5 gpa it took me another three or four years to even get into medical school and so like my road has been long and like that's just sometimes what it takes if you're a gifted kid right you take the scenic route in life so oftentimes people would ask me, you know, like about stuff uh, when I remember when I was going to when I started medical school and I saw friends of mine, right, who, were, who I was in high school with. They're already fully trained doctors and, you know, flying around and all that good stuff. And I'm just like starting medical school. And I was like, yeah, I took the scenic route in life. And to recognize that if you're a gifted kid, like it's a long road, like you're not going to do things faster. You're not going to build a mansion as fast as someone else is going to build a shack. The other thing to recognize about it being a long road, if you're a gifted kid, is don't expect to see the form of your mansion for a long time. When other people have built their shacks, you will still just have the foundation of the mansion. And you'll just keep building that. Because the, like, pretty much your whole life you're told, oh, you could build this mansion. And so you just keep working towards that. And, like, that's not something you want to do. You're just told you could do it. And you keep getting told, hey, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this, you could do this. When really you might not be able to. And so what ends up happening is your your path through life is a lot, takes a lot longer to get through because you keep trying to work on this mansion when you really could be working on the shack instead or should be working on the shack instead Oop, sound it's not going to have a roof for a long time it's not going to have windows for a long time so this is the other problem that gifted kids run into is as they put in an equal amount of effort compared to their colleagues they actually see less return on their investment and that in turn shatters their motivation and w makes them want to give up, right? Because I'm putting in all this effort and I'm still not seeing anything yet. So it's a long road. Be patient with yourself and try your best not to compare to other people. The last thing to kind of consider is that is the shame. So gifted kids oftentimes struggle a lot with self-esteem and shame. And that once again is because their expectations are up here and their performance is down here, right? And so in that gap is where your shame is going to live. And so as long as there is a gap in what you expect from yourself with what you accomplish, you will have shame. And the solution to that, oddly enough, is one of two ways, right? One is you can actually live up to the expectations that you have, right? So you can actually shoot up here and land up here. So you can go to an Ivy League school or whatever, right? You can go, you can start, you can do a tech startup or whatever. Like you can like do everything that everyone has always known you're capable of doing. So you can actually hit all of those metrics. That's one option. Then the shame will go away. Or what you can do is let go of your expectations and bring yourself down here because the shame exists in the gap. So even if you accept yourself as being like sort of a failure, oddly enough, the shame will go away. And as you accept yourself as you are, which is not wasted potential, but like in the present like you are everything that you're capable of everything that you've ever been capable of is exactly what you've achieved and once you sort of take that attitude bring your expectations down to here you will be amazed at like what happens to your motivation and what you are truly capable of yeah it it, it, it really works a wonder if you can 
if you are able to lower your expectations for yourself because that's something you can do like if you're if you're gifted and you're going through that and you're realizing everything i almost hit the mic there uh if you're realizing all this stuff uh lowering your expectations of yourself is a, a good way to get through that because like you lower your expectations and you realize hey all this work all of a sudden seems achievable it seems like i can do it now you know but you can't achieve it as long as there is that shame gap right like in terms of performance so questions anyway so let me just kind of summarize so i, I think that like you know, we see this a lot where a lot of people are gifted and we think of that as an advantage. But like I was saying earlier, I think that, you know, sometimes being gifted comes with its own set of needs. And by properly addressing those needs, we can avoid some of these things like gifted kids, you know, feeling ashamed of themselves, gifted kids, you know, not uh, like comparing themselves to like all the other normal kids and, and finding themselves lacking. Um, and also that we have to kind of acknowledge that our school system is sort of set up in a particular way that oftentimes causes gifted kids to stumble. And Facts. School system has not changed for, at this point, over 100 years. Like, technology is souped up. And that's about it. We went from... Uh, chalkboards to whiteboards to Prometheans. We went from uh, pages to uh, computers. It's not a good look for the education system, honestly. Because uh, they don't teach you anything. They really don't. And through understanding like how a gifted kid, you know, a child who is gifted becomes an adult who's perfectionistic and burnt out we have to understand that whole life cycle in order to sort of start taking steps to change it um okay so i'm sure you've been asked this question before and i've answered before so feel free to tell me where i can find the answer to this question how are you able to get accepted to harvard medical school let alone medical school alone with such a low gpa and that is such a critical deciding factor. Okay, so uh, the rest the rest of this video is uh, questions, and uh, honestly, uh, I'm not. It's very late, and not only that, but uh, I think we've seen what is here that we need, and also. Uh, I encourage you all to go watch uh, Healthy Gamer GG's video. I'll leave a link in the description uh, to the full 36 minute video uh, because he's a really good YouTuber. I found him very recently. He has a lot of interesting videos, mostly on uh, uh, mental health and. Uh, addiction and all this other stuff so if you need help in any way shape or form well not any way shape or form but if you need help with mental or addictive uh traits and behaviors uh then uh there are youtubers that are here for you uh Healthy Gamer GG's one. Uh, there's a, another YouTuber who go, uh, that makes little animations called uh, Psych to Go. I think I'll also link that in the description, that channel in the description as well. Uh, they make uh, psychology uh, videos to help people. And there's a bunch of other YouTubers. I can't really think of any off the top of my head. But if you ever uh, need help with mostly mental type uh, 
things and problems, then I really recommend these people. They are uh, really helpful with uh, problems. Obviously, do not uh, self-diagnose yourself with, uh, by using these videos. Uh, and don't try to say that you have something if you really don't or if uh, all you did was to diagnose was watch a YouTube video <laughs> because in that case you're gonna be clowned on <laughs> I'm sorry you're just that's just how it is you're gonna be clowned on and uh, yeah uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video uh, I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on uh, everything on this whole rant <laughs> about uh, giftedness and all this other stuff that we've been seeing and uh, if you like the video leave a like if you uh, want to uh, please subscribe make sure you go check out uh, Dr. K also known as uh, Healthy Gamer GG and uh, yeah, I'll link them both in the description and have a wonderful day.